society would, would like to give a big round and welcoming to uh, give Dover Delvo. Oh, you want to eat your cookie first? <laughs> So I marked off the red dots are bars in Shakopee, and the X's are grocery stores. So now we have one grocery store in Shakopee, and in those days we had about 2,000 people, and we have seven grocery stores. So something is mixed up someplace. <laughs> so anyway, this chart is upside down, so I'll go by this. This is Scott Street. And this is uh, this is uh, Second and Scott Street on the corner, and that's where Jasper's Marardi's law office is now, and that was Jerome Jasper's home, and that's an old brick building uh, from Shakopee Brick, so it's stucco on the outside now, and the, facing the railroad tracks, there was a big beer sign. The whole wall was. A beer, you know, you see them around once in a while yet. Uh, I don't know what beer it was anymore, but they advertised beer. So then you go down to Atwood, and right on Atwood Street, uh, or on 2nd Street between Atwood and Fuller, uh, uh, the Eagles had there now, but that was Jack Opel's bar, and then later his son Johnny ran it for quite a few years. And Right in here was a uh, plumbing shop, and then right on the corner was the St. Paul house. And then the St. Paul house eventually bought that plumbing shop, and they built, uh, put eight bowling alleys there. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to set pins there. And then you set the pins there. There was nothing automatic, you know. Once in a while, some crazy guy would throw the ball down before he got out of the pit, you get hit. But anyway, so then there's down to Lewis Street between Lewis and Somerville. Right in the middle, there was a bar that ran by Martin Drayson. I think they call it the Shakopee Cafe, but I'm not sure. But then right across the street from it, across the railroad tracks right here, was the Palham Hotel. And then later, Alex Stang had a bar in there. He ran, had a bar. And... Uh, so that was all on 2nd Street. So now we go down to 1st Street and pull it right on the, in here is where Wampak's Cafe is now. And that's uh, originally two guys, McMahon brothers from, uh, from uh, up uh, around Mille Lacs were gamblers and they had, they started it and it was called the Blue Inn, the, uh, uh, not the Blue Inn, can't think of the name of it right now. But anyway, they had gambling in there, and uh, then later it was uh, called Wampus bought it. Net. But anyway, then right next to it was a garage, and then uh, was the Pullman Cafe next to that. And then the Pullman Cafe at that time was actually a Pullman car. Dutch Rodemacher had brought that in and he fixed it up and they had a restaurant there. Then they had a little room in the back with a few booths and uh, I remember when we were kids after basketball games we could go in there and play the music machine and and uh, it, it was a finally expanded so Dutchie bought the garage there and then he uh, made the Pullman Cafe like it is today. So then there, then there is nothing here. And then up halfway uh, on Home Street is uh, uh, Hook Perrin had a bar there. And uh, it was uh, later years, or just not too many years ago, now it's called Bakes. But Hook's, and there originally was a, it was originally a meat market once before Hook Perrin bought it, but it's Babes now. And then right across from Babes, across the alley, that was
was our post office, the Shakopee Post Office. And they had just two little windows. And, uh, and uh, about four people could get in the post office, and that's about all they could handle. <laughs> then later, they did go down to, uh, they did move uh, across from Wampux in the building. I guess there's a real estate outfit in there now before they moved where they are now. But then that takes care of that. And then on right here on, on First and Holmes, uh, right next to where Real Gem was, there's a guy by the name of uh, Al Waite had a bar in there. And uh, he only was in there a few years, and he sold it to Rip Schrader, who later Rip was our sheriff. And he ran it for a few years, and then I don't know what happened to it. And then there's a... Uh, there, these, these are grocery stores. And then right next here was Arnie's. Arnie's bar, Arnie Tice, and uh, that's still still there. And uh, then right next to that was a, well, there was a, do a there was a gross, uh, clothing store, a little clothing store. They sold needles and thread and stuff like that. But anyway, then right there, was the, uh, where, it is, it's right now it's part of uh, Turtles. But anyway, there was, the bar was, it was called The Hole in the Wall, and it was run by Otto Seams, who was an accountant for Henry Simmons Lumber Company, and it actually was a hole in the wall, because it was only <laughs> about 12, 15 feet wide, and just down, just straight down. There was just bar, the bar and uh, boots or uh, seats there, no boots or anything. So anyway, then it expanded. Otto expanded it to where it was right here, and uh, then uh, it, it was at one time either the VFW had it for a while or the Legion. One of them had it, but anyway, Turtles bought it out eventually, and that's where it is now, Turtles. And then. Right, right on the corner where t that's still Turtles on Lewis, First and Lewis, there was a bar run by Cupid Jerison. He was a retired barber, and he had uh, uh, grow, uh, bars in there. And, and everybody in those days had slot machines. And they were illegal, but a guy by the name of Joe Topic was a, he controlled all the slot machines in Scott County. And... Um, he would, and Jerome Jasper, who then worked for Joe, was the guy that go around and he'd empty the slot machines and the bars, each bar would get a certain amount, I don't know what they got, but Joe Topic, he ran them all. So then that takes care of that. And then right up here, by the alley, was the Rock Spring Cafe, and that was run by Lenny Eyde. And that was a kind of an upscale restaurant. And then in the back, you could go back the alley, and they had a, a, a big door there about this thick with a little window in it, and that, and that was their bar. And uh, if you wanted, you wanted to get into that bar, you rang a bell, and the guy would open up the door, and if they, want, if they wanted you in, they'd let you in. If they didn't, they, you didn't get in. But one time, I knew Art Poss was working in there, and I knew Art, and I was only about 17, but Art Poss says, he left me in there and sat around, and there was always rich people from Minneapolis in there. There were never anybody from Chocopee. So there was a guy playing the slot machine, and Art says, Gib, look at this guy. He's one of the part owners of Northern Pump. Which, which the twins are thinking about buying that area now. But he's one of the owners. But Art said he's the tightest guy I ever knew. So the, he, he was playing the slot machines, and uh, all of a sudden this old guy came up to the bar, and he had about 10 nickels. And he says to Art, you know, I was supposed to get 11 nickels, and I only got 10. And Art says, see, Gib, what I told you, he's the tightest guy I ever knew. <laughs> well, anyway, no more stories. But then right across the alley from the Rock Spring, or 
Yeah, from the Rock Spring. There was a little bar owned by a guy by the name of Ben Gillenbeck, and he ran it for quite a few years, and then he sold it to a guy by the name of George Moore, and he was an old guy, and he ran it, and uh, finally it went down to where Jack Fox ended up buying it, or owning it. Jack Fox moved it in, and then right next to the Foxer Tavern was a uh, pool hall ran by Izzy Mohovo. They had liquor in there and they had beer. They didn't have liquor, but they, and then they had pool hall. And then right next to that on Willow Street was a bar called Charlie Trolls. Charlie had a little bar there. I don't know how long he ran that. But then right across the street, right on this corner on 2nd and Lewis was the Shakopee Fire Department. And they had just two trucks, two little trucks. And, and, then, and then there was a little office right next to it, and that was the city recorder's office. Flory Dirks, who owned your, the house that you, was the city recorder. And he had just the one gal working for him, so he handled it all. Yeah, well, that was way before you there. You were just a little girl then. <laughs> and then, so that was Flory Dirks. Let's see, where are we now? So then down in here, there was a place, or a little bar in there. I think it was ran by a guy by the name of George Cuckum. He's an old guy, and you asked about him, Jerry, one time. And uh, that's who ran that. And then down on here, on First Street, was a bar. It was kind of wild in those days. It was called the Alley Cat. And they had dancing, live dancing and that. And usually there'd be a couple fights there on a Saturday night. But that was before Johnny Reese owned it. And then Johnny made it, made it pay off. And that was Lorraine's husband. So then on First Street, this is Fuller. That's where uh, uh, was caught a place called the Blue Inn Cafe. In uh, later years, it was uh, Vic Haas's, and then uh, the last, it was Jim and Lucy's. But uh, this uh, guy that ran it, he eventually was at uh, Page, and he was a run, one of the head guys at Page and Hill. At that time, they made homes, built homes. So then down on, on the Street here was uh, a little bar called, uh, I can't remember what it was called, or, but it was run by, I uh, can't think of her name. She married Veronica once. What was her? Oh, Matt Leeper. Matt Leeper oh. ran that bar. And then on this corner was a bar called uh, Weber's Cafe. Doug Weber, and he, that was kind of an upstairs bar too. You know, he, he, uh, Doug wore a tie and a white shirt, cuffs all the time, and his wife and his sister were waitresses, but they were dressed like a million bucks, so he had to behave if you went in there, so we didn't go in there. <laughs> From the, on the corner was Wyland's Bar, and other it turned out to be different bars. It was what's called the Little Six Tavern once, and anyway, it was Wyland's. And then next to that, at one time, Ray Siebenhaller had a bar in there, Ray's bar, or at least he ran it. And then next to that, down here, was the Stangs, and then it was run later by the Harrogates. Uh, Manny, not Manny, Howard, I think it was. And then down here was a, uh, on the corner was a house right across from this, uh, Harry Hennon's bait shop here. Is, uh, it was called Ben Hoots. And him, Ben and his sister 
And well, his dad ran it once, and he was about 85, 90 years old, and that's old. Everybody knows that. <laughs> and uh, uh, he, uh, Ben, and his two sisters ran that bar, and they had uh, grow some groceries in it. And uh, so that takes care of the bar, and then this little dove represents the mill pond. Uh, which is Dangerfields now, and that was a gambling place, and you had a heck of a time getting in there if you wanted to. And then this here is uh, going across the river, and that was this dock represents the Riviera that was down by Riverside Park. So that takes care of the bars. Now there's, I think, seven grocery stores. On this corner of First and Holmes <coughs> was John Barron's. Right across the street was Matt Barron's grocery store. And then right in here was R.C. Klein. And then well, that, at first there was a, right in here was a, uh, a Jewish guy, Sammy Ferdman. They had groceries there. And eventually Sammy Fer Ferdman's grocery store accidentally started on fire and Sam, you got it. <laughs> so then right next to that, right next to him there was the Hartman's Group. There was groceries and a meat market. So then up here around the corner, Leo Robach had a Red Owl store in here. And then across here, right across there on Lewis Street, Barney Jensen had a meat market and a grocery store. And then right across the alley, well, uh, I don't know if any of you remember Weston Dahl. He was my brother-in-law. But his dad had a grocery store there. It was Dahl's grocery store. And then on Holmes Street, right next here, there was a, a grocery store. It was a chain, too, but I can't think of the name of what the chain started. What? Maybe. I don't know for sure. And then, uh, I can't think of it. But then on the corner here was a, uh, another gr grocery store, and you guessed that its name was Barron's. So there were three grocery stores. Matt Barron's, Matt Barron's, John Barron's, and Fred Barron's. And uh, I uh, assume they might have been brothers. I don't know for sure. But they all had grocery stores. So that, that takes care of everything, I think. Does anybody have any questions? Pardon? Was it a green grocery counter and one was different? Were there different items in each of them or were they all selling some of the same products? Pretty much the same products, I suppose, yeah. But one of them had a lot of clothes. Pardon? Well, the Barons had clothes. They they yeah, were they, did, yeah. they were uh, they had more clothes than groceries. Yeah. Barons. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. now this I probably would have been easier to show you this, but I had this Eileen made this up. So then I put these dots in and the X's at home, so I knew what I was, thought I might know what. I'm, a little more what I'm talking about than uh, when I was down here. But this is a good map of the city here. There was a silver dollar bar too. Pardon? Was, was there a silver dollar bar? Uh, hey, what? Silver dollar bar? Silver dollar bar. Silver dollar bar. Silver dollar bar. Oh. Yeah, you mean that. Uh, you probably notice that I have problems hearing. I get hearing aids from the VA, and this right left, right one fell on the tile floor the other day, and it cracked, so I can't use it. And this is the best one, and now that isn't working right. And so I called the VA, and they said, well, we can't take you till next Thursday. So I said, well, I got to get in sooner. And he said, well, you can't get in sooner here. So. So that's why I have to ask you questions. Now, does anybody? 
How many what? How many guns are you? Thirty-two. There were thirty-two, but I think I only got thirty of them here. I can't remember which ones all they were. But I remember in 1945, I, I was in the Navy and I came out and I uh, applied at St. Thomas to get into St. Thomas. Well, we took tests down there, but they were filled. You couldn't get in, about six of us. So anyway, I came back to Shakopee and I told Arnie Tice that I, I got to look for a job for a while. So Arnie said, well, I'll hire you. So I worked in at Arnie's bar for probably about four months, but he had nothing but women working there. He did no men except I, I was the only guy and then Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> and that Arnie's place is still going. <laughs> and that's the original bar yet. Yeah. The bar itself. And the original restroom? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Did what? Yeah. <laughs> you said that Uptown was owned by some gamblers from Malak? The McMahon brothers, from, they were from Doville. That's a little town about 12 people up around Malak. Okay, and so the Uptown was a restaurant and a bar? And gambling? Uh, well, the gambling was in the back room. It, oh. You know, gambling wasn't legal. But in Chicago, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was always legal, or not legal, but they did it. And then the sheriff had connections with the state. If they're coming out the raid, they were notified ahead. And so then, what, who bought the uptown after the McCann sold it? Who, well, I think, uh, you mean, uh, uh, the I think it was uh, Wampus. It was Wampus. Uh, okay. I don't know. There yeah. is. I was just. I think they. Uh, I think so. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure. I know a woman worked in there. Uh, kind of ran it for whoever bought it. Jim, when you were of drinking age. When you were of drinking age, where did you and Warren Stemmer and Hang on. Well, we uh, we could go in like Arnie's. Arnie's had a big booth in there. Uh, it'd hold about 12 people, and we uh, he he let us come in there like after the basketball game. We'd come in there with our girlfriends and that, and uh, but we couldn't. And he had banquet every Friday night, you know, and, and uh, we we could go in there, but we couldn't uh, buy any drinks and that. But we could drink pop, but nothing else. But, uh, and then we could hang by the, the, the original Pullman, you know, they had about 10 booths in the back there and a music machine, so we'd just put our nickels in there and dance with their girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 